blessing over him. We pray that, Lord, we know he has prepared long and hard. He has prayed over these words he's about to share. He has thought through them. He's cried over them in your presence. He has covered them with prayer. And Lord, he's done it all for our sake, for our benefit. Lord, I thank you that his labor in the Lord is not in vain. And I thank you that you're going to answer every prayer that he's prayed over this word. But Lord, now we as a congregation pray over him. We speak a blessing over him and his family. We pray that, Lord, you'd continue to establish them in the land. We pray that you'd continue to help them to be faithful. We thank you because, Lord, we, have not, <laughs> we need examples of pastors who walk in integrity and walk in your ways. And in this man, we do have that example. And so we pray, Lord, as, we, as he speaks to us now, that we would hear you. And Lord, we are asking now, less of him, more of you. Yes, Lord. More of you, Jesus. We want to hear you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Speak to every one of us through your servant. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. And God's people say, Amen. Let's give a big hand to Pastor Njoro as Amen. he brings God's word. Thank you. Thank you for Pastor Moriti. Can we give a hand of praise to Jesus for having an awesome leader, a visionary? We celebrate you, Pastor M. Thank you for leading us uh, as Mavuno family. Good morning, Mavuno. I know it's a cold morning. Please high five your neighbor. Tell them this is the day the Lord has made that you may rejoice and be glad in it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Just to connect to what Pastor Moriti was, sh was sharing about uh, this particular property, uh, you know, it's, it's a blessing to have rain in a river. How many of us live here? Hey, but then when I came uh, back to, uh, from Kampala, I was like, what? Because Kampala rains like almost every day. And uh, actually, when I, when I see rain here in Atu River, I'm like, wow, God is surely moving uh, in this particular area. But I just want to encourage you. We want to take advantage of this rainy season and to actually plant trees on our property. I know so many of you, uh, you came here when you were doing ground zero and maybe over time you have planted some trees, but we want to plant a thousand trees in the next two weeks. And so I want you to join me uh, either as life groups, as individuals, this coming week and the other week, we want to bring a thousand trees. Uh, we are going to send uh, a, a list of some of the trees you can bring and you're going to plant uh, uh, them all over the campus. Do you love the way the campus looks like, by the way? Do you like it? They were so green. So we want to plant a thousand trees in the next coming two weeks. So on the 5th of June, we are all going after the service. We are going to go out there as life groups, as a family, and plant your tree and say, I was there. Tell your neighbor, I was there. But tell your neighbor, we want your tree, yo. Yeah, we want your tree. So this coming two weeks, bring a, uh, some trees. You can do it as a life group, even as a family. A blood family, you can actually just come and say, Mavuno has been a blessing. You want to plant a tree and just say, wow, we were there uh, to witness what God has been doing in Mavuno Church. Amen. To all our visitors, welcome. Feel at home. This is Mavuno Church, the home of the fearless influencers. Where we do what? We turn? Hey, come on, Mavuno. Where we turn? Into fearless influencers of society. So for all our visitors, feel at home, feel welcome. And I believe that God is going to bless you uh, for choosing to worship with us today. For our visitors, this month's series is Modern Family. We have been learning together, or we are learning together, what it means to be a thriving part uh, of God's family. And last week, uh, we learned from Jesus how we can accomplish God's purpose with a diverse, authentic, and a missional group. And let me just say, the testimonies from last week were just amazing and overwhelming. Most people actually came and said, hey, Pastor Njoro, you know, that message in as much it was speaking about our small groups, our life groups, but actually it spoke uh, uh, in regard, to, I, I, felt, I felt that there was a connection in regard to my own blood family. I feel that God was speaking to me, that we need to be authentic in my own blood family. We need to be a people who have a reconciling spirit. That many of us, our blood families are not at the place where we want them to be because we are not extending grace to our EG RPS people in our family. There is a member of your family who needs grace. And some of us, we are like given up and said, Shauriake. But last week, as God spoke to us, many of us have said, I need to actually reach out. 
I need to do something in regard to my own blood family. And so even this morning, as we look into God's word, it could speak to your own life group, but also just look at your blood family and say, what is God saying to me? How can my blood family thrive and become a family that God wants us to be? Amen? And it's because of that, next week, I want us to do something special. I've been praying and I really sense that God is leading me this way. Next week, we want to pray for families, blood families. Listen, we cannot just thrive as small groups and we leave our blood families behind. We need to succeed. We need to thrive. And so next week, I want you to invite your parents, your siblings, your nephews, and your cousins, anybody attached to you. And what we are going to do is we are going to pray for you, but also we are going to, we are going to serve Holy Communion to your family and to say it's a new beginning in Jesus' name. And we're going to speak blessings. We're going to break any generational bondages or struggles or patterns. And we're going to declare God's beginning over your family. So next Sunday, invite anybody from your family. We're going to have Holy Communion all over this place. And you're going to come, serve Holy Communion, and speak a blessing to your family in Jesus' name. Are you going to be excited next Sunday? It's going to be awesome. We're going to pray. And I believe that many testimonies will come forth after next Sunday. So please make sure, send that WhatsApp to your family and just say next week is Mavuno Church where we want to go and pray so that we can succeed and become a family that God desires. Amen? So as I start my sermon this morning, you know, I, 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 love, I love Kenya. I'm a proud Kenyan. Amen? And just to see what uh, was accomplished yesterday by Collins, wow, Kenyans, we are record breakers. Amen? Hey, come on, let's give a shout of praise to Jesus. We are proud Kenyans, amen. But also one of the things I also admire Kenyans is we are also record breakers when it comes to giving excuses. We are also record breakers. Okay, let me ask you. What are some of the topmost excuses that Kenyans give if they're late for a meeting or they don't show up for a meeting? Come on now, talk to your neighbor. <laughs> I will talk to your neighbor. Okay, top five. What are the top five excuses that Kenyans give when they come in late for a meeting or they don't show up? Please talk, 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 talk to your neighbor. But they do not feel convicted, or guilty, or condemned. Please, it's okay. Maybe, maybe this video can actually put some, can remind some of us what we normally do. Just watch this. Maybe this video can actually show you what we do. Just watch this. Can't you hear that I'm on a border border? So, <laughs> so I want us to do a countdown in the order of the most frequently used phrase. What is number one that Kenyans use? Traffic. Yes, traffic is number one. Number two? Rain. Is it rain number two? Okay, let me give you my order, then you can tell me, right? So number one, traffic. Number two, my phone died, so I couldn't call. And then number three, I changed phones, so I don't have your number. <laughs> just laugh, but even your pastor is laughing. I have issues, but they have used that one. So just laugh. No guilt in the house of the Lord today, amen? 
Then the fourth one is something came up. And up to today, we don't know what came up. Actually, to be honest, there's a guy I saved on my phone as Shuguli. Because anytime you just call him, he doesn't show up, Nikonashu. Something just came up. And then, of course, there, is, there was a network issue. I couldn't get through. Then there is a blackout or floods or rain. Oh, because it's raining right now. And then, of course, not feeling well. I'm sick. And then number eight, my reminder didn't go off. Oh, I'm so sorry. Imagine my reminder, my alarm didn't go off. And then this one, by the way, I know almost every single one of us has used. Imagine I thought the meeting was tomorrow. <laughs> no condemnation in the house of the Lord. I know. <laughs> And then there is another one. Hi, how are you? Where are you? Nikombali Sana. I am on the other side of town. And by the way, one time I remember we were supposed to meet with a guy in town. And someone was like, what's up? So, you know, the way you're just waiting and I saw his uh, Facebook post. I think he had forgotten he has put location on. And so it showed he was in Upper Hill which is community uh, area, but Upper Hill. So I called the guy, I'm like, hey, what's up? You have taken so long. Ah, imagine, Nikombali sana. But I'm like, hey, dude, but I saw you on your Facebook, you're in Upper Hill. And the guy has in no conviction at all. He just says, hey, Cindy, Niko Hapa Gong Hills. I'm like, not Uko Upper Hill. Hey, Niko Hapa Gong Hills. Just tell your neighbor, I am proud, I'm a proud Kenyan. <laughs> you know, <laughs> some of these reasons are actually legit, to be honest. There are times actually you change your phones. <laughs> or ukombali sana. And it represents the many challenges we all face today when it comes to keeping our commitments. Personally, as I've said, by the way, I'm so glad because I have come to Mavuno Church where we are real people with real issues. Even your pastor speaking today has issues. And I know that personally I've used several of them on many occasions. But truth be told, we are living in a commitment-phobic generation. We, we have a problem to commit. The service hosts were talking about the resolutions. Somehow we have just a problem. We are so quick to speak and to commit, but we rarely follow through on our commitments. Today, adults are far less willing to commit to anything. And today I was just thinking, I was like, if God were like us, breaking resolutions left, right, and center, trust you me, this world will be chaos, Right? Imagine if God doesn't keep his promise. Imagine. Even the promise of just giving us life. Imagine if God will break his promise of protecting you. Do you know some of us will not be here today? Imagine. If God was to break resolutions or his resolutions or promises, the world will be in chaos. And let me say this. And chaos is what we see in the three most vital institutions of this society. The family is in chaos because of the commitment for big people. The church is in chaos because of the commitment for big members. The country, government, is in chaos because of the commitment for big kind of a leader that we have today. You know, it's not like uncommon to hear of separation and divorce in families today. Yet God, who instituted marriage, expects us who enter into this sanctum of marriage to be faithful. But what we see today, when people come into marriage, they are coming into marriage because of convenience. If it doesn't work for me, if I'm not happy, which is relative, 
If I don't get what I want, I go. Families are suffering because of the commitment for big couples that are getting married today. What about the church? It's uncommon to hear churches unable to fulfill their vision because the congregants were not faithful in their giving, in their commitment to make sure that the church is meeting or fulfilling its obligation that God has given them. Eh, I don't want even to start with the government. Just watch the news today and you'll see story after story of leaders not being faithful to their campaign pledges. Right now, because it's next year, they are back. They are back. The road. I will even clean up your air. Hallelujah. Okay, no, they don't say hallelujah. <laughs> they are back. Giving pledges and, and promises. And you ask yourself, where were they in the last five years? Where were they? Do you know why? Family, church, and government is in chaos. It's because there are no faithful men and women to keep to their commitments and responsibilities. We are suffering right now. Unfortunately, we are also experiencing the same chaos in the area of community and relationships. We are not committed to running the distance to connect and belong to a community of friends. In fact, sociologists talk about three types of poverty. There is material poverty, and we all know what material poverty is, right? We all know what material poverty is. And then there is the second type of poverty, which is known as spiritual poverty. That you may have all the physical wealth in the world, but yet spiritually, you're completely bankrupt with no real eternal hope in life. So there is material poverty, then there is spiritual poverty. But I can tell you the truth. The type of poverty that we may most be impacted by and not even recognize is what sociologists call relational poverty. Relational poverty, that you can have many people around you. You can even be connected via social media and yet inwardly you are longing for more intimacy and more depth of community. And one of the things I've observed in my generation is that it seems the more financial blessings we have, the more material blessings people have, the more they are losing the blessing of relationship. Have you seen that pattern in Nairobi today or in Kenya? The more people are being blessed financially, which is our portion as children of God, amen? We need to be blessed, yo. The more we are blessed, the more God is taking us to higher levels, the more we are losing the blessing of relationship. It's like the more people are being blessed, the less disconnected they are becoming. And yet, many of us are longing for something more. There is a knowing sense on the inside that something is not quite right. I have everything. We have a good house, a good car. My children are all blessed. But inside of me, deep down, there is something that is not right. And we believe there must be something more relationally than we are actually not experiencing. In fact, I will argue that the reason is because many of us are so impoverished in a way that we don't even recognize. You are so poor relationally that even you don't recognize. But you have a hole inside of you. There is an emptiness, there is a vacuum, and you know something is not right when it comes to my relationships. Why is it so hard then for our generation to commit to something they desperately need? Why? If then I need to have a community around me, if then I need to have relationships around me, 
that will better me, that will make me to become the person that God has called me? Why is it so hard for our generation to commit? I see four urban realities that push us to relational poverty, which are in common in our generation today. Number one, demanding lifestyles. People are busy. This Nairobi, guys are busy. We battle increasingly demanding lifestyles that rob us of the time and energy that we need to invest in close relationships. Long work hours, traffic, I need to drop my kid to school. There are many things. Our lifestyle is actually working against the blessing of being in a community. The second one, which I see in common today, there is an increasing relational risks. People have been hurt in the past. People are, the, the world is dangerously filled with risks that drive us deeper and deeper into isolation, simply out of a basic instinct to self-preserve yourself. And so you're like, hey, me, I've been hurt before. I've been wounded before. I've been betrayed before. Let me live my, my life. The betrayal and the growing mistrust among friends. Then the third one is increased mobility. We live in an increasingly mobile, recent society that prevents us from really settling down. As in, I think an average Kenyan, we are just on, we move. Today, you live in this estate. Tomorrow, I don't know where. It's like after every three years, a typical Kenyan moves to a new estate which robs us the opportunity to establish roots and build deep relationships. Do you know, you cannot form relationships on the run. You can't. You can't. And many of us are there. We are here and there. Tomorrow we are here, we are there. And it's robbing us. We don't just stay in one place for very long. And that's the reality. It's the reality. I'm not telling you don't shift. That's the reality of Nairobi, of Kenya today. Another reality is that there is a rise of social media. I acknowledge, by the way, social media has tremendous blessing. I use different forms. I'm on WhatsApp, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Hey, come on, Joro, Twitter, hallelujah. Thank you for your mentorship, Pastor Moriti. Twitter. I see great benefit from them. But at the same time, it's not just face, it's not the same with face-to-face -face, uh, contact. Something is missing. Did you see, like a typical Kenyan spends six and a half hours on social media every day. Every day, every day. By the time you're checking your WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, everything compiled together, it comes to six and a half hours. A typical Kenyan. So many of us, we are going through life with 400 or 5,000 Facebook friends, and yet we have no one to call if we really need to talk and reveal our hearts. You know, perhaps you're like me. I'm in a life group. Where is my life group, generals? Yeah, yeah. We meet every Wednesday. Perhaps you're like me. You're struggling a very busy full plate in life. A plate that is overfilled with modes of things that you need to do and you're responsible for in your life. Perhaps they are overflowing your dish, leave alone being full. It's overflowing. We all struggle with the demands of our career and all the frustrations and the stress placed on us. You have the goals, you have deadlines, you have the work, as in the office, politics, all these things. Then you have your own family obligations. You are taking the kids to school. You are picking them up from here to there. You are dealing with their demands and obligations. Forget your own, the kids' demands and obligations. Then, maybe you're already volunteering in Mavuno Church. You're doing something and you're juggling uh, uh, for something in the church or maybe, uh, maybe uh, even you're in school. There are many things which are happening. 
And then Pastor Njoro comes and asks you, why are you not attending life group? You're like, what? <laughs> Pastor, do you know my life? I do not have the time. I cannot possibly commit to anything else. I'm overloaded. I am overwhelmed. Which are the O word? Overloaded, overwhelmed, and what? Overcommitted. All these overstretched. I'm just, oh, God. Okay, yeah. You are just overwhelmed completely. And to be honest, let me say this. To be honest, then you are the person who needs to be in a small group the most. If that is you, then you're the person who needs to be in a life group the most. Do you know why? This is what we said last week. Isolation is your enemy to your journey if you're so busy, overwhelmed, overcommitted, everything, all the O's you have said, then you're the person who needs to be in a so small group the most. Why? Because isolation is your enemy to your journey of purpose. Listen to me. We are designed to connect. God doesn't want us to live in isolation. He didn't want any man or woman to be alone. If it is God's will for us to connect, then you need to understand Satan's agenda. It is to disconnect you. And sometimes he may not use the evil things to disconnect you. He's going to use the everyday uh, schedules and routine to push you to a corner where you're all alone. And guess what the Bible says in, in the book of Peter? The devil is like a lion. Seeking someone to do what? To devour. You can come and say, ah, oh, but look, it's because of my family. But listen, you need to understand that the enemy objective is to keep us disconnected. Satan wants us to be isolated. To simply connect means to move out of, out, out of, 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 uh, out of, uh, of isolation and comfort and to connect with other people seeking God. That's all it means to connect. You know, last week, we saw Jesus connecting with his group of friends. The, this community literally changed the world. And I want to say, we are here because of the 12 men who are committed to make a deep connection with Christ and a profound connection with each other. So I have a question for you, Mavuno, this morning. Is it possible to have this kind of a commitment today regardless of the realities that we face? Is it possible to have faithful men and women who are going to commit to belong to a community, to a small group, despite the realities that we are facing today? And so today we are going to look at a group of one of the greatest leaders in the Bible. Many, if not most scholars, consider the Apostle Paul the most important leader in the history of the church, with the exception of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's influence cannot be overstated in spite of him never having an oversight of a mega church. What he did, he planted a, a small house churches in over 30 cities. He wrote half of the Bible. If Paul was alive today, based on the things he accomplished, he will be a celebrity preacher, featured on the front pages of Standard and Nation and Christian magazines. This guy was just a success. And I want us to look at Paul's inner circle and see what we can learn about commitment. Because in as much Paul accomplished all these things, he didn't do it alone. And neither can you. You need people. You need to belong. You need to connect. So I want us to look at Paul's inner circle and see what we can learn about commitment. Open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 4, verse 7 to 18. Colossians chapter 4, verse 7 to 18. Let me just say, for any parent who has been praying 
to get a name for your baby, pray no more. The Lord has answered you today. Because as we read this scripture, one name is going to pop out and you'll be like, yes, I hear Lord. So as we read, for those parents who have been praying for a name. Tai Chi cast, Tai Chi, Tai Chi. Okay, let's read. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. Look at the explanation. Look at how Paul describes these people. He is a dear brother. You know, by the time a man is calling another man dear, you guy, it's another level. A dear brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I'm sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He's coming with Onesimus, Ones, our faithful, again, our faithful and dear brother who is one of you, One. They will tell you everything that is happening here. Then verse 10, my fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, hey, Bamba, hey. Aristarchus, come. As in, already there's greatness within Aristarchus. My fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Then verse 11, Jesus, who is called Justus, Justo, also sent greetings. These are the only Jews among my co-workers for the kingdom of God. And they have proved a comfort to me. Verse 12, Ephaphras, there is no short name for Ephaphras, Epap, Epap, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus sends you greetings. He's always wrestling in prayer for who? For you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he's working hard for you and for those in Laodicea and Hierapolis. Then, our dear friend, Luke, the doctor, and Demas, Demas, hey, send greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters of Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. And this letter has been read to you. See that it's also read in the church of Laodicea and Mavuno and that we in turn read the letter from Laodicea. Verse 17, tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. May the Lord bless his word. You know, Colossians chapter 4, verse 7 to 18, is the part of the Bible that nobody bothers to read. It's easy to assume that this is the dull part of the book. What you have here at the close of Colossians is a group photograph. Paul told them, line up. It's a group photograph of his buddies, of his community. It expresses the very deep satisfaction in the life of Paul that is able to accomplish his ministry only because of the faithfulness of his dear friends who have stuck by him, who have been helpful to him in his ministry. You know, when I say faithful, this is what I mean. I mean steadfast in, in affection, an allegiance, loyal, firm in adherence to promises or in observance of duty. The people in this particular scripture had one thing in common. Tell a neighbor they were faithful. Tell a neighbor they were faithful. They were faithful and committed. And each, when I look at these people, each had all the reasons not to be faithful. All of them, they had a reason as to why, why they shouldn't be faithful in that particular small group. You know, sometimes it's easy to go with convenience. But these people, they all had the reasons as to why they shouldn't commit. What are some of the challenges that these people are facing? That they could have given them the opportunity or an easy way out from not committing to the group. And some of those reasons, can I be real today? Can I preach the gospel? Some of those reasons 
are some of the reasons many of us have of not committing to life group. How is it after Mizizi or after Refresh, you are 12 of you, but only four show up? But they never, ever, ever, ever miss out on a manu final. They are where they need to be. Always on time, even to watch the advertisements. <laughs> but when it comes to LG, what happens? What happens that after doing this and graduating, you're all on fire? Then only two come. But they post on Instagram. They never miss on plots. This man in Paul's life had all the reasons not to commit, but they chose to be committed and faithful. Let's talk about some of the challenges or the reasons as to why some of us are not faithful or committed to a life group. Reason number one, these people, the men or the people in Paul's life were committed despite the distractions. Tell that to your neighbor, committed despite the distractions. Let me talk to somebody. The reason many of us don't attend LG is because we have allowed ourselves to be distracted by other things that keep us from being faithful. You know, some of Paul's friends had every reason to walk away, but they chose to be committed to belong to this group. Let me, let me give you, let me, let me look at this group. Ephaphras, tell your neighbor Ephaphras. Ephaphras, this guy is an example of a guy who has matured in his faith. This guy is the spirit guy of the group. Let me talk to some people right now. There are most of us in Mavuno who have said, I don't want to go to my LG because it's not deep enough. I mean, I said I'm going to be real, yo. There are people who don't come to life group because it's not deep enough. They feel they need to be connected to a people who are at their level, who can speak the way they can speak and pray the way they can pray. Life group in Mavuno, too shallow. Now, let's talk. Ephaphras had all the opportunity to go and start his movement. This guy was a prayer warrior. Instead, of choosing to run away from a group, he looked at that group and said, instead of me going away to look for another deep group, I'm gonna bring the fire in my group. Instead of running away, I'm gonna make my life group what it needs to be in Jesus' name. So what does the Bible say? A Epaphras labored in prayer for the group. Mavuno life groups are not deep. Why don't you make them deep? By praying for those people, interceding for them, and mentoring and coaching the young Christians. Actually, the day you said that life groups are not deep, actually you showed your shallowness. Woo. Because here's the thing. A mature guy, if you are truly connected with God, you have come to understand that everything that God gives me is not for me, it's for the people to be a blessing to the people. That's the sign of maturity. It's anything I receive from the Lord. It's not for me, but how to be a blessing to the people around me. I remember one time someone told me, Pastor Njoro, you are so spiritual for Mavuno. I said, what do you say? So you want me to go and look for another church that is spiritual like me? Then what am I getting? Listen to me, legends don't sit with legends. Legends mentor and coach others to become legends. So have you been giving a reason as to why you don't come to life group because it's not mature? Because it's not deep? Then I tell you, Ephaphras is your guy. God is convicting you right now. Start praying for them in the will of God. Start mentoring and coaching and uplifting and then you're going to get what you deposit. Now you want to withdraw something you don't deposit. The only thing you do is just withdrawing cakes and teas from that life group. But you never deposit anything. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you get what you deposit. 
Ephesus, instead of looking for deepness somewhere else, he commits to use his gifts to uplift the group instead of running away from them. Is that so with us? I know you are gifted in prayer. Not everybody is at your level. Is God saying to you, become an Ephesus in that group and commit and say, I will pray until they understand and walk in the will of God. I will not run away. Then there is a guy called Archippus. This guy is a young man who loves the Lord, truly wants to serve him. But Paul seems to tell him, Archippus, there is something you're not doing and you need to start doing. You need to make the first things first. I don't know what had distracted him. Maybe it could be something of the world. Maybe it could have been a sinful thing. But Paul is telling him, Archippus, I don't want you to be distracted by secondary activities. Make the main thing to be the main thing. Start doing what you are not doing. And this morning I sense there is an Archippus in, the, in our midst. You have not been doing what God has been calling you to do. I don't know. You know for sure that God has called you into that life group. God was, you know, God is an awesome organizer. He knows the reason as to why he put all those people around you. But you have not been doing it. And Paul tells him, Archippus, I want you to be committed despite the distractions. Keep the first things first. But now there is this guy, Demas. Demas is the fly in the cup of tea. For him, for Archippus, I believe he heeded the instruction of Paul. But for Demas, if you look at an LG photograph, this is the guy with his face down, looking sad. And Paul almost says his name in passing. His name is Demas. He had a great start. But during the second imprisonment in Rome, if you read Luke, uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, this is what the Bible says. Demas has left me in love with this present world. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, Demas thought, this Christian thing and LG thing is not all that is cracked up to be. And he thought about having a better life somewhere else. He was probably a very able man who realized he could earn much money and possess a beautiful house with a beautiful wife in a wonderful surrounding by taking up the ones, the goals and the opportunities of the Salonian Thomas. Is there a Demas today? The reason as to why you don't attend life groups is because of those deals. Every single day, you are chasing a deal. You have no opportunity to stop and say, where is this direction taking me? For how long am I going to pursue deals at the expense of growing in my relationships? Every day, you have a meeting somewhere in the evening. And guess what? The one thing that hurts me when there is a manual game, Arsenal game, you have cleared your calendar. But when there is LG, you can start up meetings to have an excuse. And my prayer will be, don't be a demas that will be distracted and go so far. I don't want to be a demas. Tell your neighbor this. Community happens when commitment wins over convenience. Tell that to your neighbor again. Community happens. When commitment wins over convenience. Ephesus could have gone with the convenience of looking for a deeper group. Archippus will have gone with convenience and start, start pursuing his own dreams. But they chose to be committed and to be faithful. Committed despite the distractions. Community happens when commitment wins over convenience. Number two, committed in the midst of drama. Tell your neighbor, committed in the midst of drama. You know, our own personal drama 
or group dynamics have been a major issue in Mavuno life groups. People don't come to life groups because of their own personal issue. They're like, oh, Pasi, I am going through. That's why I can't come for life group. And I'm like, okay, I hear you. Others will say, there is something happening in my life group. We always fight. That's why I don't come. But how did Paul's group react to the drama in their own lives and in the group? There's this guy called Onesimus, Ones. Ones had a personal drama. This guy was a thief. He stole from his master, Philemon. And he fled to the city of Rome. Somehow he found Paul and he was introduced to the Lord Jesus. And right now, Paul is sending him back, not as a thief, not as a guy who robbed his master, but now as a follower of Christ. Now, here's the thing. To be honest, if you are Onesimus with that kind of a past, where people know about your personal issue, would you come? How many of us, the reason as to why we are not committing to our life groups is because of our past. Because of a label that you feel that I have on my back. Anytime I go to the life group, people look at me with an angle. Onesimus chose to walk away from the opinions of men. And he said, I will not allow my past to rob me the joy of being in a community. So, Riyako, whatever you think of me, think of me. But right now, I know where I'm going. I'll be focused. I will be committed in Jesus' name. And I commit to you. Someone in this church right now, you are anointing us. Maybe something happened a few months ago. Maybe you got pregnant. You have never showed up again in your life group. Maybe something happened, maybe your business never picked up and there is a shame that you are carrying up today. But listen to me, Onesimus had a past, but he committed to walk the journey of being in a community. And guess what? Actually, most scholars agree, after several years, Onesimus became the, the pastor of the church in Colossae. A guy with a past who could have run away because of fearing to be labeled, became a pastor of that church in Colossae. Are you going, not going to your life group because of your past? I hear the Lord is calling you back. He's saying, come, my daughter, my son. I can take the past and use your past for my purpose in Jesus' name. Then there is a guy called Mark. Mark had an issue. They had a group dynamics. Paul, Mark abandoned Paul during the ministry in Paphlia. Either he was soft and reliable, I don't know. But the guy just recoiled and left Paul. And they had like an issue where Paul was like, Sir, I don't want to go with you. And Barnabas took him. Are there some times in our life groups when we disagree about where, when, what we need to do? How many of us run away because of the differences? Look at Mark. In as much they were dis disagreed with Paul, we see Mark and Paul, after a certain time, they chose to agree. They chose to agree to disagree and move forward. Now we see Paul speaking about Mark as a comfort to him. A comfort. Mark. You're a comfort. You're a source of soothing because they had a strong commitment. They, they were willing to pay a price that our life group will not die because of our differences. You know, the care pastors are here. We hear many life groups are dying just because of differences. When to meet, where to meet, which cake to eat, which Tea leaves to use. Niketepa. Ama nikericho. How comes? Look at Mark and Paul. They never allowed to sacrifice their community on the altar of their personal differences. There's someone who left because you just disagreed. You felt you're not listened to. What I'm telling you is this. Community happens when commitment wins over convenience. We must commit. We must commit and win over convenience. 
for community to happen. The third one, committed in times of discomfort. Tell your neighbor, committed in times of discomfort. You know, another reason why we don't attend LGs is because of the discomfort we experience in our groups. Have you ever heard this reason? Let me be real. Hey, Pastor Njoro, I don't go to my life group because, hey, that life group has issues. People are going through hard stuff and you feel overwhelmed. You feel so overwhelmed. And you're like, hey. And they come by the way politely say, hey, Pastor Njoro, hey, that group needs fasting. <laughs> they are going through hard stuff. You know, anytime we go, we hear about something which has happened. And you leave. I know my question is, you know, as human beings, it's easy to magnify people's issues. But we never see the discomforts that we bring on people. Our own. But it's easy to see what so and so does. For you, you're complaining because of our issues or his issues. But you don't even have an idea. The way you scratch your beard is making someone else this uncomfortable. But they have chosen to commit no matter the inconvenience. And they have said, Nita enda tu. But you, you have chosen to abandon your group because of what they are going through. There are three people. Paul had issues galore. If I was in Paul's life group, I'd be like, imagine your leader say today he's been arrested, in prison, he shipwrecks, beaten, stoned. I'd be like, hey, Bambi, hey, too much, Paul. Too much. But this man chose, and they stuck with him. He was facing overwhelming issues. But how did they respond? Look at Luke. Luke was an educated doctor in the Bible. He has, uh, he has a two-volume set. He wrote two books in the Bible. Highly educated, highly qualified, a leader that men will follow. And yet, his greatest role was to become Paul's armor He chose to stick with Paul. He chose to walk with him. He was there, start, uh, treating the apostle. Very serious health problem. Luke will have said, hey, by the way, to follow you, Paul, is actually putting my family at risk. You preach. Let me go and hear the Lord. To honor Paul. But Luke chose to be there. He was not shaken at the challenges that Paul was going through. He was not shaken by the issues. He was not shaken by the risk. He stuck by his side. And he said, come on, buyer. Buyer. Let's do this life together. How many of you, you have refused to go to the life group because of that man, that lady who is going through issues? And yet, the reason as to why we have those communities is so that we can have burden bearers walking together in this life. Then there is this guy called Aristarchus. Him, he went even a, a step further. He chose to spend time with Paul in prison. He chose to make Paul's lifestyle his lifestyle. He had an opportunity to look for another group that was issue free. But because he was sympathetic, because he cared, because he loved, because he knew Paul needed him, he was a man who was a sympathetic, uh, with a sympathetic heart. Listen, as I said, there are people who cannot lead a meeting. There are people who cannot be able to speak. There are people who cannot be prominent in Mavuno Church. But they are the most beloved of all because they are the burden bearers. They are the burden bearers in our small groups. There are people who say, I will never leave you. They say, I will walk with you. People who have given up their liberty, people who have given up their comfort to walk with people in pain, in suffering, so that God can accomplish what he wants to be accomplished. He is a sympathetic man. 
I call him the man of all seasons, the bad weather friend. Is there a bad weather friend in your life group? Thank God for those LG members who stick with you when it's so hard because all of them won't. Who will volunteer? Hey, Aristarchus raises his hand and says, Paul, Paul, which prison are we going? That was the level of his commitment. True greatness are with those who are faithful despite the drama in their life group. People who stick there and say, because today it might be Pastor Jade, tomorrow it might be me. Today it might be mercy, but tomorrow it can be me. If today I choose to quit on this community because of what is going through, then one day I might be going through a life issue. Who will I call? Who will I run to? Are you the guy who has run away from your life group because of issues? All I know that you need to commit despite the drama. Then there is this guy, Tychicus. Tychicus was an errant boy. Tychicus was known as a mailman. Imagine this guy. He's not known of a guy who planted churches. Sidri, he did what? The only thing he's known, he's known for, this guy is an errant boy. Mailman. You know, there are people in our life group who say, you know, I feel I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't have enough responsibility. You know, I wish I was the leader I'll commit. Look at Tychicus. He wasn't a leader, but he was faithful in the little he was doing for that group. The guy was the one taking the letters to Ephesians. He was an errand boy, a courier. For him, it's just Tychicus, Barua, Imefika. Go, and he runs. He never complains. But you, you are there complaining. How you feel you're not challenged. <laughs> Listen. The small assignments we do with God, they are enough as long as God is in them. You don't have to do something big so that you can commit to your life group. Ah, uh -uh. Tychicus was an errand boy, a mailman, running everywhere. But he never saw his task as so small. But he committed. And listen, because of Tychicus doing his job well, every church got his letter. Let me tell you, our life group can only become as great if every one of us plays their part in Jesus' name. Then the last one was Nymphas, a lady. This mama was not a leader. She wasn't experienced. But guess what? The Bible says Nympha, she gave her house to be used. That's all she did. And guess what? Maybe her motto was, the little I have with God is the biggest of all. If only I can give what I have and God is in it, then period. And I want to commend right now for every single person who has given their house to be used for our life groups. Because what happened with Nympha, she gave her house to the Lord and God made that house to be his. And there are many men and women in Mavuno Church who have given their house and God has taken your house to become his house. And God is doing amazing stuff right there in your sitting room because you are saying, I cannot be a leader. I cannot do so much, but I have a house to give. And so right now, I want us to give a mighty shout of praise to the people who are giving their house to our life groups, who are saying, this is the little I can offer. I cannot be a life group leader, but I have a space you can use, my boardroom you can use, my office space you can use. Can we give a mighty shout of praise again for those people? We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Remind your neighbor, community happens when commitment wins over convenience. One thing you need to realize, behind Paul's success, there was a group of faithful men who were part of his group. Mavuno, you need to surround yourself with faithful people to succeed. It's not brilliance 
that will help you impact the world. It's faithfulness. Faithfulness to the things that God has called you to do. The things that will help your group succeed is when every person commits to be faithful, to play their part. Today, the days of excuses are gone. The days of giving all manner of reasons are gone. We cannot give the world the best and give God mediocre, half-hearted commitment. Ah, I refuse. It's time for the church to arise and become an example to the people around us that you know what, when it's something to do with God, I'm going to give myself 100%. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be counted as one who was faithful. With the rest of society not living up to their word, marriages are breaking everywhere. Churches are being ineffective. Politicians of this day and age are breaking their campaign pledges. Mavuno, I have a question to ask. Are we going to, be st to stand and be counted as faithful? Are we? When you look around, we have commitment for big people. But I pray, Holy Spirit, make this church to be a church of faithful men and women who are going to become an example in your houses, at your work, in your homes, in your life group as you serve in Mavuno. And the commendation we shall all aspire to is one from the Lord. One day we shall stand before him and he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, you have been faithful with a few things. I want to pray. I know we are talking about our life groups, but I know there is a man, a woman here. You have not been committed and faithful to your own family, blood family. You have been given your parents all the reasons in this world. I am busy. Busy, but you can go to every single game. You can go to every single girl's out. Chama, you can make time for those. But you've been giving your parent all the reasons as to why you can't go and do something for her or for him. Go and see them. That I know today there is someone who's been convicted. You have not been there for your brother, for your siblings. Listen to me. Your own family will become a community when commitment will win over convenience. I know someone is being convicted. There is a phone call you had promised you're going to make. There is a visit you had said you're going to make. There is something you said, hey, I'm going to commit to do. But now it's five months. You haven't. And God is convicting you, saying, will you be counted? as one of the faithfuls. Will you? Will you? Will you? And I sense that we need to pray that God to forgive us. And trust to me, you, the pastor and Joro here is guilty. There are things I've committed and I've not done. And I'm asking God to forgive me. And this morning, my prayer will be, may we ask God to forgive us of the people we have hurt because of our lack of commitment. People that they, were, they, they, they thought we are going to walk this journey with them. Some of you right now, I sense right now through the Holy Spirit, you gave up on your best friend when he or she needed you most. And you said, it's no issues ni mob, I can't hack. And you left your best friend when you needed, when he or she needed you most. And you started another WhatsApp group discussing her, discussing him. Do you remember that WhatsApp group you started, like a cyber, to discuss your best friend? And the way you just said, enough is enough. But our God is a God of grace. Our God is a God of grace. He still calls us back and says, it's okay. Now you know that community can only happen when commitment wins over convenience. So at this time, as you're closing your eyes, I don't know 
which area God is calling you to commit. It could be in your area of life group, maybe your family, maybe your own marriage, that God is saying you're not being committing enough, giving excuses to your spouse why date nights cannot happen, why you can't be home every day, why you can't be there for your kids, giving excuses. But God is saying, hey, commitment needs to win over convenience. And you're saying, I need to push my commitment level up. Wherever you are, just stand up on your feet. You know an area that God is convicting you to commit. It could be any area. Stand up on your feet. Because I know we are so many. Myself, I'm standing on this altar because I need to commit in so many areas. Maybe it's my area of spiritual growth. I don't read the Bible enough. I've been giving God all the excuses as to why I don't read the Bible. Stand up on your feet. Attending life group. Giving to the church. Serving. You've been giving excuses all and over and over. But now you're saying, now I hear. I need to call Pastor M up to come and pray for us. You're saying, hey, I've been giving reasons and reasons and reasons as to why I shouldn't commit. But today I know God is calling me to commit. And after praying this prayer, He's going to pray for all of us in our life groups that we are going to have the fruit of the spirit of faithfulness. We shall commit to be faithful in our groups. Amen? Amen? And for those, you know, for those who never committed to refresh because it wasn't deep enough, this is your time to go back at the table there, Ms. Easy. Do refresh again. Press that button again and say, uh -uh, I cannot live in isolation. I cannot be in a community because of convenience. It might not be deep enough, but maybe I am the person to take others through Ms. Easy. I want to be part of a community. And so he's going to pray for us for those three areas. And then we'll conclude the service. Amen. Let's stretch out our hands before our Father. And even as you stretch your hands, you're not doing this for pastor. You're doing this to your father who is here speaking to you. So begin even to just say, sorry, Lord. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yes, Jesus. Speak to your father. He's here. Say, Father, forgive me. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. I've abandoned my family on the altar of my own convenience, my own hustles. I've abandoned my friends. Father, forgive me. I've been running so fast, I've just left community behind. I've given excuses why I can't be in my life group. I come so erratically. I sort of live like I can succeed alone. And I've not been faithful. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Father, I just sense there's somebody here who's caused so much pain to their parents. Because they're not even there at family functions. So busy. And they almost have that sense of, can't you see? I'm an important person. I'm going places. And I sense that, Lord, today you're convicting our hearts. Yes, Lord. You're causing us, Lord, to come back to what it really means to follow Jesus. It's yes. faithfulness. Yes, Jesus. Lord, you're not looking for super gifted, eloquent followers. Yes. You're looking for faithful people. And Lord, as the congregation of Bavuno Church, we just come back to say, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. For when we've made this thing about ourselves. And I include myself in this prayer, Lord. That Lord Jesus, you'd forgive us. And that Lord, you'd help us to be faithful. Help us to be faithful in the small things. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to our family members. Help us to be faithful in the places we give commitments, in our life groups, in our areas of service, help us to be faithful. Lord Jesus, there's so much clutter around us. And sometimes that's what confuses us. That Those distractions that our pastor was speaking about today. But Lord, we want to just ask that you would give us wisdom, even to know when to say no to other things. The things that seem urgent to us. So that, Lord, the important things will happen. Lord, I sense there are even parents here who need to cut down on their, their, their working for their children. Yes. So that they can be 
with their children. Oh, yes. And Lord, we're so many hours out there that we don't even have time to build community in our own family. Yes. Lord, teach us to avoid the madness of the world around us. Oh, yes. And help us to be a community that is radically different. In Jesus name. So that Lord, even when people come into our fellowships, when they come into our families, they would find a difference there. Yes, Lord. They would not see the, the frantic frenetic running around chasing after the things of the world that typify the rest of our culture but they would find a contentedness a godliness with contentedness without us that Lord they would see something in us that would be different and inspiring and Lord I want to pray for every life group that is represented here that Lord Jesus you would cause us to be faithful to one another Oh God, I pray for my own life group. Help us to be faithful to each other. I pray that Lord, you'd cause us to stand together, to encourage each other. Because Lord, we cannot go very far by ourselves. We need one another. I pray that Lord, you'd help us to dignify each other's gifts. We all have different gifts, but we each have a contribution. And so Lord, I just sense that in this series, in this season, in this time, That, Lord, you're bringing a word that is purifying your church. You're taking us back to the basics of what it means to follow Jesus. And I pray that, Lord, we'll be faithful to follow you in the way that you're calling us to. Lord, for those here who've not even become part of a small group, a, a community, and who've committed now and are saying, I will sign up, I will do this refresh, I will do this, Ms. Easy. We pray for them that, Lord, their experience will be a phenomenal experience. And we pray that, Lord, you'd put them in a community of faithful people who will help them finish well. I pray for every new group that has started recently. And I pray that, Lord, you need, you'd help us to become a life group that will finish well. I pray for those old groups, those of us who've been together for a long time, encouraging each other. And I pray for new life, a new sense of missionalness, a new sense of loving and commitment to one another that we will help each other finish well. And so, Lord, we come to you now. We bless you, we thank you, and we honor you. Amen. I'd like all of us to stand up on our feet. Even before we do the benediction, maybe there is someone who's saying, I suffer from spiritual poverty. As we talk about committing to my small group, I have never made a commitment to follow Jesus. And maybe today you are sensing, hey, actually I've been taking a wrong route, wrong direction. But today I need to commit to the one thing, to the eternal hope of the life to come. And even the the, the life there, there, uh, this life right now. And you're saying I'm spiritually poor, but I want to commit to follow Jesus. You have never given your life to the Lord. Maybe even you fell off like Demas, but you're saying it's my time to come back home. The world took hold of me. But today I want to commit to come back home. Wherever you are in the next one minute, lift up your hand wherever you are. You're saying, Pastor Njoro, today is my new day. I sense God is calling me back to a place I need to commit to follow him, to be a Jesus follower and to commit to God the life that I need right now. Lift up your hand wherever you are. I know you're there, you're a Demas, you walked away from God, but today you're coming back and you want to pray for you. Will not shame you, it's just to say, hey, I want to commit. I don't want to follow Christ out of convenience, but I want to be faithful. Wherever you are, lift up your hand high. I want to see it, wherever you are. You fell off, but you're saying, hey, Pastor Njoro, today I want to come back home. Pray for me. I'm going to pray for you wherever you are. I'm going to see it. Lift up your hand. Anyone? Before we pray. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? You're saying, thank you, sir. Anybody else? Thank you, sir. Anybody else? You're saying, hey, pray for me. Pray for me, Pastor Njoro. My life where I am right now, it's all about money and I can see you, sir. Anybody else? You're saying, pray for me. I've walked away from God. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? You're saying, I've walked away from God, but I want to come back home. Pray for me, Pastor Njoro. Anybody else? Thank you, sir. I can see you. Anybody?
everybody else. I want to lead you into a prayer of accepting the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. Can you help the people who have lifted up their hands? Let's say, dear Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace and mercy. This afternoon, I welcome you into my life to be my Lord and Savior. I commit to follow you faithful. I commit to live for you. I commit to glorify you. So this day, I confess all my sins and I accept your forgiveness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's give a mighty shout of praise to Jesus. Before Pastor M prays for us, next Sunday, we're going to be having Holy Communion as families. We're going to do Holy Communion in life groups the other week or even maybe this week. But we want to pray for your families because you know lack of commitment has separated your blood family. But then next Sunday, we're going to commit to one another as blood family to work together in regardless of our issues to be there for each other. So invite your parents, invite your siblings. And guess what? You're going to renew your sense of faithfulness or commitment to your family and say, I am sorry because I've been too busy for you. But the Lord's table is a sign of a new beginning, of a new dawn in Jesus' name. So next Sunday, bring your family and we shall have an altar, a family altar to pray for every family in Mavuno Church. Amen. God bless you. Can bless us, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate Pastor Njoro. What a timely word. Exactly what we need to hear as a community. How many people know their family needs this? My family needs this. I know my family needs this. And I'm so excited to be inviting my family. I'm, I'm glad some of them come here. So we're going to work together, Ruth. Huh? And I know some of my other siblings are here. We're going to make sure our family is here. I look forward to sharing with them. Please, let's fill this place with our brothers and sisters. Some of them don't come to church. And this will be a great opportunity to bring to come with them and just invite them to come. So I want to bless us as we go into this week. Wow. You know what? Actually, let me change that. I was just about to bless you. Then I realized we're all pastors. It's a different year. Take your neighbor's hand and just speak a blessing over them. Let's speak the words of the grace over them. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And we'll see you next week.